So we welcome you now to the Terrier Group for Crofts 2015, the Earth Docks, the Rat Pack if you like, the dogs designed to deal with vermin out in the countryside. Coming into the ring now, escorted by Anne MacDonald, is our judge for the evening, Martin Phillips, famous for his Jaiva kennel of Norfolk and Norwich Terriers. He's been involved in show dogs since he was a teenager and reserve in the group uh, years ago with one of his Norfolk Terriers with uh, very experience in all of the Terrier breeds. So the first thing we're going to see is all the Terrier best of breeds for Cross 2015 coming into the ring. Led off by the King of Terriers, the Airedale. And here comes the Australian Terrier. And the little Bedlington Terrier. Easily distinguished with his light gait. Oh, here comes the Border Terrier. Workmanlike working terrier. How could you mistake the Bull Terrier? This one will be towing its owner in. And in a smaller package, the Miniature Bull Terrier. The busy little Cairn Terrier. The Chesky Terrier from the Czech Republic. The gorgeous expression of the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. The smart, smooth Fox Terrier. Black and white, ultra smart. And his close relative, the Wire Fox Terrier. Here comes the Irish Terrier. Of course, if you're observant, you'll know there should have been a Glen of Imal there, but it's actually not here. And here's the Kerry Blue, another of the Irish breeds. And the Lakeland Terrier. The smooth lines of the Manchester Terrier. And the first of the two little ruffians, the Norfolk Terrier. And here's the prick-eared Norwich Terrier, close relative. The little Parson Russell Terrier. Ah, here's the Scotty strutting in. And the Celium Terrier, of course we've seen the Celium go best in show here at Cross before. And here's the silhouette of the Sky Terrier, the longest dog in the group. And the maddest dog in the group, the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, full of joie de vie, this breed. And here's a big roar for the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, almost on his home territory here. The Welshman, the Welsh Terrier. And the crisp silhouette of the West Highland White. Wonderful lineup. So here we are with our judge having a look at his best of breeds in the Terrier group. First chance he has to cast his eye over what the breed judges have sent forward from the breed ring. Great diversity. We have the, the trim breeds, those which are shown in their natural form, untrimmed, and of course the smooth coated ones. There's something to please every taste here. Of course, all, all, all of the uh, terrier breeds started off as vermin killers. From the 18th and 19th centuries, every household needed a dog to keep down the vermin. They could also hunt, bring home rabbit and hare for the supper pot. So here we have them. Many of the local breeds, the United Kingdom has always been rich in local terrier breeds, and we're going to see all of them here tonight.
So the first of our Terriers to be judged tonight, the largest, the Airedale Terrier. Matthew has come all the way from Moscow to be judged here today. Originally this breed hails from Yorkshire, prized for its scenting abilities as well as its rat catching ability. Used a lot by both the police and the armed services. Harsh, dense, wiry coat with a black or grizzled saddle. A little bit unsettled there in the big ring. This dog's done a lot of travelling, of course, to get here and had a long day. And this is a big ring at Crufts. It's something special. It's a, a big crowd, lots of lights, lots of noise, but they should be still very bold and confident in the ring. Of course, it should be a, a short-backed dog with that tail cranked up. Airedale should be full of attitude, but, but never aggressive, should they? Uh, absolutely. They're wonderful characters. Once you've owned an Airedale, you really want to own nothing else because they're very lovable, great, loyal companions. And, of course, hugely versatile. have been used as messenger dogs in the trenches in the First World War, um, used by the forces also. Just getting his composure there, a bit more confident. A very smart, stepping out with style. Now we have the Australian Terrier. It's thought that the origins of this breed go back to the early settlers from the United Kingdom who took some of their Terriers to Australia and there they've been developed into this breed we have here. Rather longer in the back than some of our terriers, so it's quite a long top line, smart, clean cut head and these sharp, alert ears, one of the terrier characteristics. Sandy and red we, we get, a uh, most popular colour, but we'll also see them in black and tan. This, this, is, this is Nutter, this one. I love the description. Sturdy and low set, and the standard asks for them to have a hard bitten, almost rugged appearance. Lots more coat around the neck and shoulders, isn't there, Frank? Yes, a characteristic rough around the, around the, the front end, down over the neck, down the front. So there's our little Australian terrier using those ears, not missing a thing as it takes its stride around the ring. Next up, North Country Dog with an almost lamb-like appearance really, bred to bring rabbits home for the pot. This of course is the Bedlington Terrier, originally called the Rothbury Terrier. You can trace Bedlington ped pedigrees back further than almost any other terrier breed. That coat has an almost linty texture and the trim really does make this one look like a little lamb. Now, it's always been said that the, the Bedlington Terrier might look like a lamb, but it's got the heart of a lion. They're very game, sporting dogs. And it's thought that perhaps the Dandy Dinmont, with its curvy top line, has an influence in the background of the Bedlington Terrier. And when we see them move, it asks in the standard for an almost mincing movement. What do we mean by a mincing uh, well, movement, a, a Frank? A slight, slight lift and lightness on the move. And of course, it should maintain the slight arch over the loin, which is typical of the breed, and we see it there. Now, this comes from the mighty Midgets Kennel. They won a lot of the top awards today, and this is 10-year-old uh, daughter hand handling the... Uh, best of breed winner and I wonder if she's the youngest ever to handle a best of breed winner in the group at Crufts. That's a remarkable achievement. Yes, that's young Sophie Laurie, just 10 years of age. And a beautiful look at the head of the Bedlington Terrier there as it comes towards you. Now the clean cut racy outline of the Border Terrier. An unexaggerated working terrier, absolutely functional, and from the 19th century, often used as a hunt terrier following hounds. Three distinct features here this otter like head, clean, scopy neck and shoulder, a thick pelt that's a good, thick skin, protection when working, and a harsh, wiry top coat. So, 
this is a beautiful outline and a lovely otter head and expression there. These absolutely unexaggerated, a, a, a real workmanlike terrier. And the breed standard says when it comes to movement, they should have the soundness to be able to follow a horse because they often used to work with the hunts. Here we have this wonderful clean action coming towards us, holding its top line on the move, and the tail almost like a carrot shape carried neatly off the back. And as you say there, Frank, there is nothing exaggerated about this little dog, is there? Yes, and obviously they should be spannable. They shouldn't be too thick or broad in the chest. They should be spannable so they can go down narrow holes to do their job. the gladiator of this group with its characteristic egg-shaped head, pricked ears and almost a bodybuilder's physique. This is Nessa, three years old and of course she's a bull terrier. Bull terriers are almost jaunty on the move. They should be nice and parallel which means when you see the front legs coming towards you they're good and straight, very strong, well muscled, short, flat coat and this one pure white. Yes. Now, here, in, in, a, in a group where we have lots of trim terrier breeds, with the bull terrier, it's all about clean, flowing lines, excellent conformation, which gives good movement, and this wonderful head shape, and this rather small, almond-shaped eye, giving a sort of wicked glint of expression. This one's had a great year, because recently, the, the um, bull terrier club show, the prestigious uh, trophy show she won the trophy for the best bull terrier bitch exhibited last year so she's had a very good year and just look at the mischief in those little triangle eyes <laughs> tongue lolling full of character now something in a smaller package the miniature bull terrier same standard but they should be measured uh, no more than 14 and a half inches or so in the um, sometimes the judge will measure them in the ring but that doesn't happen very regularly one of the great challenges is that to get the the same bull terrier type in a smaller package that's a challenge but we still have should have the same head shape the same amount of substance and of course terrier attitude And Honky has come all the way from Italy to compete at Crufts, a multi-champion, also a champion here in the UK and in Ireland. Handled by Jared Cox in the ring today. And this one, you'd call this a brindle, wouldn't you, Frank? Yes, they, they, they call them coloured bull terriers, but this is a brindle and white, yes. We'll also see them in black, uh, black and tan and tricolour. This one, a brindle and white, and s stepping out with style. They should be quite wide and substantial in front, shouldn't they? Yes, they're one of the breeds which combines the bull breed with the terrier, so they've got more substance than a lot of the other breeds. And as she comes towards you, there is absolutely, he rather, I beg his pardon, there is absolutely no mistaking the power in that dog. Cheeky little Cairn Terrier. This is Ollie. They've come from uh, Uddarala in Sweden to compete at Crafts Cares. Have a relatively um, recent Scottish history. They actually arrived on the show scene just at the beginning of the 1900s, even though they look like such an ancient little terrier breed. Cheeky glint in those dark eyes, framed by shaggy eyebrows, and topped by those characteristic small pointy ears. This is a wonderful little dog, enjoys being outside in the rain all day, doesn't care one jot how dirty or cold it is. Now this one came into the ring with great attitude. Uh, one of the th things about the Ken is it should be full of attitude. The, the breed standard asks for a varminty expression. They should look like a rascal ready to go, and this one does. A good length of leg on the Cairn Terrier. We'll see that a lot of the Scottish Terrier breeds are related. Two centuries back, they will share the same gene pool. But here, it's rather more likely built than the Westie. 
Um, some of the characteristics, but again, this good length of leg, the tail just carried off the back, not over the back, as in some terrier breeds, striding out with a lovely, lovely top line, moderate length of back, good length of leg, lovely balance and proportions on this one. I like it a lot. And that coat is tough and weatherproof. Cheeky face of the Cairn Terrier. Now on the table, the Chesky Terrier. Now this hails from the Czech, what was the Czech Republic. And it's an interesting mixture. It comes from a first cross with the Celium Terrier and the Scottish Terrier. And it has some of the characteristics of both. Again, we see this long punishing jaw, which is essential for all working terriers. This one, grey, gray, we'll see it also in shades of silver. Um, a rectangular dog of medium length of body. And that coat is customarily trimmed over the head and the body, but leaving longer coat on the legs and the underbelly, underbelly to protect the dog. Of course, the characteristic eyebrows, the beard and the moustache really make for that strong terrier face, don't they? Yes, and of course, if you want to have a shortcut in terriers, lots of the terrier breeds here are hand-stripped, which takes many hours to get them looking to perfection. With the Chesky Terrier here, they can be clipped along the back um, and left with these silky furnishing so if you don't want all the terrier trimming work a chesky might be the one for you of course it's carrying its tail fairly low that is permitted in the chesky terrier a dropping of the head and a slight falling of the tail quite typical of the breed so there we have the chesky terrier which of course is the national dog of the czech republic the Dandy Dinmont Terrier, a delightful breed that takes its name from a character in Sir Walter Scott's Guy Mannering. What's more, the colours, there are two colours, there's mustard and pepper, and they came from the names of Mannering's dog in the book as well. The head in this breed is very distinctive, covered in abundance of silky hair, large expressive eyes and those pendulous ears, and always with a lovely black nose. The top line of the Dandy Dinmont is quite distinctive. It's supposed to be weaselly, like a weasel in the body, a dip behind the shoulders, a rise over the loin and a fall again to the tail. And it should maintain that flowing, curvy outline on the move. They're a wonderful breed. On the vulnerable native breeds list, which means less than two, less than 300 bred last year. But I can't understand why they're not more popular. This wonderful large eyes, they're great characters. A crisp coat, furnishings on the leg and the tummy. And good big shake there. And recently, they had the, the uh, bicentennial of the novel Guy Mannering, the bicentenary, and they all went up to Abbotsford, Sir Walter Scott's home, and the Duke of Buccleuch has nominated a tartan dedicated to the Dandy Dinmont, the Dandy Dinmont tartan, and a lot of the exhibitors were wearing it today. And here's the ultra smart outline of the smooth fox terrier. Short backed like a well made hunter. And here we have good depth of body, ultra short back, tail set bang on top. What a fantastic outline this dog's got. Of course, they were developed in the West Country about two centuries ago, as the name suggests, to go to ground for fox. And they were often carried by the huntsman on horse in a pannier, but really smart. I think the standards sometimes, the breed standards for these dogs, were created by wonderful wordsmiths. The smooth fox terrier is described as having bone and strength in small compass, and you can really see it there with the silhouette of this dog, the outline. There is nothing here that is small, even though we're looking at a small dog. Great bone, great substance, fantastic character, a really strong looking terrier. And, and this has really struck me as a very impressive smooth fox terrier. At going absolutely precisely in front, covering enough ground and holding that top line. This long, clean head, wedge-shaped, smooth cheeks, powerful jaw. 
And even though this is a small dog, it needs to it needs to have depth, a deep chest, which you can really see there, powerful legs. They often say a lot of dog behind the tail, which basically means the power in the hindquarters. And should drive himself along. This one's come from America, where he's a big winner. First time over, and he's had a great day, and I can understand why. He looks great. Now a close relative, this is three-year-old King, bred in Belgium. The wire fox terrier is very similar to the smooth, but of course with a completely different coat. It's dense, wiry, and either tan, black, or black and tan markings on an essentially white background. The longer coat on the legs and foreface, it has to feel crisp to the touch, and is trimmed to perfection in a show example like this. Now, this dog has pulled off a spectacular win today. He was best of breed at Crufts last year, defeating the top dog, um, who's been top dog this year. Today, the ringside was packed to see a rematch, but they were joined by all of the famous wire fox terriers um, from over Europe and America. And this dog has done it again, defeating uh, last year's top dog into third place. Wonderfully crisp outline, smart as paint. Of course, they share the smooth and the wire share almost the same standard. This crisp coat, which gives furnishings on the head and the legs, are one of the differentiating features. But we should expect, should we not, to see the same kind of depth and strength in the wire fox terrier as we see in the smooth. They should Great have, characters too. And they should have some substance. Yes, on the tiptoe of expectation, the terrier should be. This one. He was one of the Terrier group at the World Show, third best in show at the World Show in Helsinki last year, so he's done pretty well for himself. So the bold and fearless Wire Fox Terrier. Now a late arrival into the group, it's the Glen of Imal Terrier, one of the native Irish breeds. Tough, robust, that rising top line, the top line just rising towards the tail. That's typically in the breed. Strong teeth, which a terrier needs, and a strong head. This is a terrier with a lot of substance and a very mischievous expression. Neat ears, and, a, and again, a weatherproof coat, which equips him to work in all weathers. And of course, the power and strength in this heavyweight, the Glen of Imal Terry, was essential because until as recently as 1966, you couldn't make up a champion in this breed unless your Glen of Imal had a working certificate in badger trials if it was to become a champion. Obviously, that's not done anymore, but it's that function that leads us to understand why the dog should be built like this, why it needs jaws of that strength and a front end that's able to dig. Yes, a strong front legs, which are slightly bowed, which wraps around that deep chest but also it said gives them more grip when pulling out their quarry from the from the den that rising top line very typical of the breed it's one a red or wheaton and look at the character in that dog so the glen of imal a breed that struggled for numbers but undergoing a bit of a revival at the moment thank goodness The classic racy red outline of the Irish Terrier. This is a real sporting dog. In dashing shades of red, always instantly recognisable. Racy are the many of the Terriers, and by that I mean they look a little longer, a little leaner, and on slightly longer legs. That classic Terrier head, though, all these Terriers will have long, strong jaws to do the job they were bred for. Now, this is Paula. They've come from Germany to compete here at Crufts. World winner in the last year and have also won best in shows abroad too. Yes, and the, the same German kennel won best dog and best. They won the double today, a great, a great achievement for the kennel of the Brutners, the Ems Müller kennel. So the strength and the classic red coat of the Irish Terrier. Now
now look at the alertness on this tiptoe of expectation this Kerry Blue certainly got it one of another breed from Ireland his name tells you a lot about him he comes from County Kerry and he's got a blue coat this sh lovely shade of blue again full of alertness I call this breed lightning on a lead because they wonderful explosive temperaments always always ready to go they're that long clean head and neat folded ears and you might think that that coat should be crisp, like some of the other coated breeds we've seen, but not in the case of the Kerry Blue. It needs to be quite soft and silky textured, doesn't it, Frank? Absolutely. And although they're blue now, they're born black. And by about 18 months, they're clear to the shade of blue. So that's interesting to watch the coat developing. But look at this, a lovely short back, lovely clean long neck, powerful hind quarters driving him along, and lovely tail carriage. This is very nice indeed. I like this. And Denny's a three-year-old dog, won eight challenge certificates and a champion. And who said dogs don't enjoy showing? Just look at that. Another of our vulnerable breeds, this the Lakeland Terrier. This comes from a very, very famous Lakeland ten, uh, Terrier Kennel, the Sarandon Kennel, named Adele, three years old. They've come from Utoxeter to, uh, to compete. And like so many Terriers, they have to work in all weathers. That coat is of vital importance, dense and harsh, with a softer layer next to the skin, like a duvet jacket underneath the harsh top coat. The rain just rolls off it. A really smart, clean-cut outline. Again, essentially a working terrier. There's no exaggeration. They've got some substance in that body. The head, not as long as the fox terrier. A little bit broader, but stepping out smartly and covering the ground. They used to work in packs and used to, again, work with hounds sometimes. So they have to be game and workmanlike. And again, it takes a lot of work and preparation to get a coat looking like this. Really smart. The Saradon Kennel has won best in short crafts in the past with a Welsh Terrier, versatile breeders. Something quite different, it doesn't need any trimming at all. It's the Manchester Terrier, the Black and Tan Terrier. And it says that this is the oldest of the smooth Terrier breeds and goes to the early rather generic type of black and tan working terriers from the 19th century now smooth flowing outline curving over the loin black and tan is the only color and we might see some thumb marks on the tan on the front legs just above the feet And this dog was originally bred, of course, in the city of Manchester, used by publicans and warehousemen as an absolutely superb, lightning-quick ratter. Don't mistake, this dog is a working dog. There's something very endearing about the Manchester Terry. They're lovely natured dogs. And there's a huge section in the standard devoted to exactly how those tan markings should look, isn't there? Yes. It, it, again, the, the thumbprints on the tan of the front legs, the tan on the muzzle and above the eyebrows, and the breechings and under the tail. Very specific. The black and tan of the Manchester Terrier. Now, amongst the smallest of the terrier breeds we're going to see here tonight, this is the Norfolk Terrier. This is Snooker, two and a half year old dog. And the Norfolk and the Norwich we're going to see in a minute were quite closely related, just sort of general farm dogs that were used for ratting, described as tiny little demons. They have the most fantastic temperaments, short backed, compact, with a broad skull, and this one with folded ears. Wonderful expression there. They're great character dogs. Quite strong in the skull and should be strong in the muzzle as well to equip it to do its work well. There's a lot of substance in a small space. This cobby dog of the Norfolk Terrier. 
And of course, Kathy Thompson Morgan's kennel has put many superb Norfolks in the ring here at Crufts. This one's monkeying around a little bit, but that's typical terrier temperament. And he's been here before. He's been best of breed at Crufts. This is the second time he's won best of breed here. Very successful kennel based in Doncaster in South Yorkshire. Yeah, and look at the compactness of that body. Big ribs. Proper cobby little dogs, aren't they? They're the delightful expression of the Norfolk Terrier. Now spot the difference because this here we have the Norwich Terrier and the chief difference is the pricked ears which is pricked nicely there to show us. Um, until 1964 the Norfolk and the Norwich were shown as one breed and then the Kennel Club um, with pressure from the breeders did distinguish and here we have the Norwich Terrier. Again the same substance, the same strong legs and feet and this wonderful alertness of expression. Now this is only a little dog, but we should be looking for a really brisk and purposeful stride from the little Norwich Terrier. Small but substantial and pretty much a workman-like terrier. Now although they may be the smallest in the terrier group, <laughs> they don't know that. They're full of their <laughs> own self-importance and confidence. And although they're lively, they are not quarrelsome. They're not fighters, they, they, they are animated, but they're not quarrelsome. Very important wonderful characters to live with and once you've had one you'll want another one and another one they're quite addictive well you could fit half a dozen in the suitcase <laughs> more or less couldn't you i didn't say that <laughs> yeah. so the delightful little norwich terrier Now this will be a very familiar outline to many people who've got one at home in their living rooms. This is the Parson Russell Terrier, but what you've got at home probably looks similar but isn't exactly the same. It's a confident little dog, energetic, originally developed by the Reverend John Russell to work foxes, to go to earth and either dig out or trap foxes in their burrows so they need to be sturdy, they need to be full of endurance, full of terrier temperament and that's probably part of the reason why a lot of people struggle with them as pet dogs at home. They really need something to do with these little dogs. And although they, share, they may share some of the same ancestry of the fox terrier, there are some marked differences. A stronger skull and a shorter muzzle they're longer in the body and the tail set is a little lower in the Parson Russell Terrier. They should again be spannable, which means a man should be able to span the rib cage with his spread hands so it's not too broad, it can go to earth. Clean lines, racy little dog, but full of power. What a fantastic silhouette in this Scottish Terrier. Looks cut out, wonderful short back, a lot of substance in that. Now the Scottish Terrier, we can go back to the early Scottish breeds. The Isle of Skye was a great producer of Scottish breeds. Many of them, which were called the Scottish Terrier, have been developed in different ways. The Cairn and the Westie, we'll see in the group tonight. But here, the original Scottish Terrier developed like this. This again, the Scotty, distinguished by this long, clean head. These neat. Get, just getting him ready there for his movement. This, <laughs> That's this, a shy yes, Scottish yes, yes, terrier yes, yes. hiding. <laughs> <laughs> now this one's come all the way from Russia, but look at this long, clean head, neat pricked ears, straight, strong legs, and that tail carried erect. A lot of substance in those powerful hind quarters, driving him along. This one looks immaculate with crisp wire coat. Beautiful, beautiful outline. Pet R named Nopper. This one's come all the way from Russia to compete at Crafts and won best of breed.
the lovely lines of the Celium Terrier. This is Moto Moto, sturdy little dog this should be, an oblong inner outline, but with plenty of balance. They give the impression of substance. This is a really solid little dog, even though it's not very big. Hailing originally from Pembrokeshire, where Captain John Owen Tucker Edwards developed the breed from the Corgi, the Dandy, the Westie, the Wire and the Bull Terrier. They must have had some fun. Now this is another one that's come from Russia to win today. Russia has become very successful. Its breeders very clever, getting their stock from other countries and developing very well. This is a beautiful specimen. I have owned two Celium Terrier champions uh, 40 years ago, so they're uh, very keen on this breed. Celium Manor in Wales, where the breed originates. I went there to see a pack of Celiums working, working with hounds, with otter hounds, and working along the riverbeds. They were amazing. So, under this wonderful presentation, there is a dog capable of working. This is extremely nice. This colour on its head, this badger marking we call it, quite permitted. Low to ground, but striding out well. Now the longest dog in the group, the Sky Terrier. Again, I told you that Sky, the Isle of Sky, was a, a, a great developer of breeds. This one, of course, takes its name from the Isle of Sky, sometimes called a yard dog, measuring 36 inches from nose to tail. This one has been here before. It's won the group at Crufts in the past. Long, low, and level. And here he goes. And those ears can be either pricked like that, or they can fall, can't they? They can be dropped over. Yes, there's two types of ears, the prick ear and the drop ear. Makes you wonder, doesn't it, whether the dog can actually see where it's going. Look at all that hair. Again. Should be quite a hard, dry coat on top, not a soft coat. It has to be functional. Very characteristic outline there of the Sky Terrier, the longest dog in the group. Where the Sky Terrier might be the longest dog in the group, this is the maddest dog in the group. The soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, renowned for having the most wonderful, joyous temperaments. Larger in frame than many in the group, and they have a very specific coat. Needs to be all the shades of ripening wheat in colour, soft to the touch, and falling in waves or loose curls. And this is yet another one that's come from Russia. What you were saying now, ju uh, just now, Frank, these are uh, uh, great quality dogs coming from the east. Yes, and I think they've come by coach load, actually. <laughs> it's just, that's true, a, a group have come on coaches. Here we see the dog striding. Soft-coated and wheaten, two words which describe the breed. Now there'll be a big cheer for this, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, a mixture of bull breed and terrier, developed originally in the black country around Dudley and was used for fighting in the 19th century. Very fortunately that, that's passed away now, but here, unique in that it's shown on this brass ornamental collar, shown front on to show off the width of chest to give it a low centre of gravity to stand its ground in its original purpose but now hugely popular as a family pet they have this substance but also terry attitude and they love their family devoted to their owners a, a tail like a pump handle there raw muscle on the move the Staffordshire Bull Terrier there Another one originally used for hunting foxes and badgers, this is the Welsh Terrier. The characteristic black and tan coat should be compact and a very affectionate dog in nature. Another one that makes a wonderful family pet, even though its origins, of course, were very much as a working terrier. Yeah. 
Now, he may bear some resemblance to the wire fox terrier, but he's more heavily built, a little broader in the skull, stronger in the muzzle, and of course, black and tan is the colour we most often see this in, or it can be um, grizzle and tan. This one, extremely smart. And like all terriers, what we're looking for there are powerful jaws. In this case, as a vermin hunter, those jaws need to be long, and in the Welsh Terrier, furnished with a lovely red beard. And this one has travelled a long way to be here, and looking a little bit tired there, actually, not very animated in its movement. Extraordinarily, all the way from Malaysia. And it's become a champion today, a British champion from Malaysia. Now, the very easily distinguished outline of the West Highland White Terrier, smart as paint. Related to the other Scottish breeds and developed along the same lines, but one family kept only white terriers. The Poltalic strain was developed, so they're white with dark pigmentation, which sets off that lovely expression, eye rims and nose, black. And Viva's a four-year-old bitch. They've come from Germany to compete, so we've got a lot of very strong foreign contenders in this group. Delightful expression on the Westie and moving out really well. They're deep-chested dogs, aren't they? Frank? Yes, very powerful. Deeper than the cairn, a little stronger in bone than the cairn that we saw earlier. But really smart, motoring along. So that's the last of our group best of breed winners. This is the West Highland White Terrier. So our judges had a chance to have a closer look at all his Terrier best of breed winners. What we want to know now is who is he going to pick? There's a rich selection of wonderful dogs here, Jessica. So it's going to be a hard task. Just taking in what he saw, hand, reminding himself of what he found on hands on examination. Um, this is a time of deep concentration for the judge because he has to whittle them down to about eight or ten. And presumably that job just gets more and more difficult the higher the quality in the group, and this is a quality group. Yes, there's a lot of dogs I've liked a lot in this group. The two fox terriers were stunning, the Scotty looked marvellous. And, and Paul Martin Phillips is probably thinking, oh my goodness, who am I going to have to leave behind? So who's he going to pull out? Well, he looks very determined. The Australian Terrier gets called in. And the very smart Border Terrier looked really well. The miniature Bull Terrier comes forward. The smooth fox oh, terrier. Oh, glad the smooth's in there. I think it was gorgeous. And the wire fox terrier. There's King Arthur, last year's winner. The Kerry Blue is called forward. Neither the Norfolk nor the Norwich, which Martin breeds. And here's the Scotty. Look at that for style. So and the, the Scotty Sky all the way from Russia and the Sky. Our shortlist is complete. It's a handshake of congratulations to the others leaving the ring. And our shortlist going to the back of the ring so they can give me, be given plenty of room to move again. So we've got eight finalists now. Cut that group down to eight. The first of which is the little Australian terrier. Nutter, two years old. Belongs to Sue McCourt and Paul Erdley. Paul Erdley's handling in the ring. Smart little dog with those prick ears working the whole time in super coat. And striding out, it's here that they have to put on a good performance, no flagging, holding their top line. They really have to ask to win at this level and the handlers have to keep their calm. Now, this smart outline of the Border Terrier, going immaculately, holding that top line, 
striding out. It covers a lot of ground with each stride. That's e economical action. Beautifully parallel front movement. Quite narrow in the chest, which they need to be. And that thick skin and crisp coat on top. Tail carried like a carrot. This is going very well. Looks extremely smart. Lovely neck and shoulders there. As it there. turns towards you, you get the look at this beautiful little otter head. Look at that gorgeous head and expression. Listening to the handler, putting in a really faultless performance here. Now we've got our miniature bull terrier, this multi-champion, Honky, who's come from Italy, handled by Gerard Cox in the ring. Big, yeah. powerful front. I mean, it really looks like a wrestler, this one. Yes, a lot of power and strength in a 14-inch maximum size. So, yes, look, that egg-shaped head, it's motoring round, long stride, and this very good width of chest. What a difference with the board terrier. This is a cracking little terrier, this one. Now, I've been very taken by this. So, big winner in America. Absolutely superstitious, but a great performance. Absolute classy dog. I can't understand why they, they aren't more popular. Little grooming to them. Wonderful characters. Again, an immaculate mover. And Juraj Skolik from Croatia handling no, Dustin no, in the no, ring. We move on to the Wire Fox Terrier now. King Arthur. King handled by Warren Bradley. Last year's group winner. Wonderful crisp coat. Clean, long head. Won the Terrier group here last year. Also, Terrier group at the World Show in Helsinki. Third best in show there. He's got a great record. Will he be able to do it again, though? Here we go, the Kerry Blue, this is Denny. That distinctive coat, this one really full of Terrier character tonight. It'd be a handful to handle in the group <laughs> ring, but of course shows the dog to its absolute best you, advantage. You need a dog like this, you know, they've got, you know, you'll bring this attitude to the ring and it can take the judges out. Lightning on a lead. Great character. So it's down to the Scottish All the way from Russia, Noppa, five and a half years old, the Scotty, using those fantastic prick ears, that long head coming towards you. Now, this looks immaculate. I'm very taken by this. Now, obviously, our judges handled it to see what substance and what the construction's like underneath. But from the ringside, this looks an absolutely fantastic specimen of the breed. Absolutely beautiful. I think this one might go close to me because from here it looks just wonderful. And the last to have a last look, the Sky, the longest dog in the group. This is Lampard, five years old, in wonderful coat. Again, this has been a group with Rick Crofts in the past. You were talking, Jessica, about two types of ear, the prick ears and the drop ears. In the early days of the breed, the prick ears were the prized ones, and the drop ears, they cost a third of the price because they were considered inferior. Now they're treated on an equal basis. So that's the Sky Terrier. Those are our eight finalists. Who is Martin Phillips going to pick? A man with an enormous amount of experience in this group. He's got some super final contenders there. The boards are coming in. Martin just checking there, there, and then he's going to select his group winner. Oh, Frank, you'll be delighted. It's the Russian Scotty that right. takes the group for Crafts 2015. And didn't she look magnificent at all times? She, she really took the eye. Oh, look, second place for the, oh, King Arthur, the Wire Fox Terrier. Yes, last year's winner of the group is second place to that wonderful Scottish Terrier bitch today. And there, oh, the Border Terrier, I'm so glad. They're not a showy breed, but this one looked immaculate. Wonderful breed type. And then the Miniature Bull Terrier in fourth place. That's a great win for a Miniature Bull Terrier at Grubbs. What a marvellous lineup of Terriers there. But the winner for the group, the winner for the Terrier group, Crafts 2015, is McVans to Russia with Love. Nopper, all the way from Russia, triumphing over them all. Just look at that Terrier attitude. Superb. And 
I'm sure she'll be a very good, strong contender in Best in Show tomorrow. The Terrier judge judging, and I'm sure he'll love the type of that, but she'll have tough competition. Now we've got Gerald King, chairman of the Crufts Committee, coming out with Katie McConnell, who's president of the British Small Animal Veterinary Association, to present the trophy for the Terrier Group 2015. The trophy won't be going back to Russia, but those rosettes will. And little knocker, not phased by anything. Yes, I won the group. <laughs> Glorious face, that terrier. Now, I think we're going to have a lap of honour for our winners. Just the last rosette going out. Yes, to the miniature bull terrier who took group four. So there's our winner on a lap of honour. McVans to Russia with love. Nopper takes the Terrier Group for 2015.